Today I'm talking to Craig Campbell, the one and only affiliate marketer, business owner that scaled multiple companies through SEO, as well as tons of stuff, um, including being an actor. which is a, a big part of his brand right now. Uh, he has, uh, I think, four films that you're currently um, a part of right now. Is that right, Craig? Four? Uh, maybe. Uh, dude, I don't even know. There, there's a few that are filmed, or that have been filmed that have yet to be released. But yeah, there, there's probably around about four. Um, one was filmed in November there. Only a small part, that one. Uh, and there was another one that was filmed in April last year. Um, I've got a much bigger part in. And uh, that's still not been <laughs> released. I think it's imminent, you know, over the next few months. So I'm yeah. sure you've not seen the last of it. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. And um, thanks so much for jumping on. Because uh, if um, anybody doesn't know Craig, probably everyone does. Because we're in the SEO industry. Um, but Craig has personally helped me. Uh, he gave me a Black Friday consulting call that was super useful, uh, introduced me to a lot of people in the SEO industry. So, um, yeah, it's an honor to talk to you. Um, <laughs> just for the fun of it, tell me a little bit more about uh, being an actor uh, as a as you're going into the Hollywood scene and and why that matters for SEO. Um, so, obviously, you were there at Chiang Mai, um and got the full version of the story, but the condensed version for guys on here, I was trying to build, as we we call it, the knowledge panel. And you go to, to a particular website that shows you the entities that you need to be listed on. So you've got like Amazon. So I went out and launched an Amazon book. Thick. There was like Google done something on there, got a link from there, there was Crunchbase, there was Twitter, there was LinkedIn, whatever, whatever, whatever. <coughs> but there was one that, <laughs> so my knowledge panel uh, wasn't quite triggering, and there was one um, in the middle of this list called IMDB, and I thought, oh, fucking hell, right, let's get IMDB next, and uh, of course that's where the drama starts. So I go in to IMDB, I put my own name in, and I see that there was a guy with the exact same name as me who had played a part in some porn flick back in 2009. Um, but he hadn't claimed his profile. So I thought, fuck it, let's see what happens. Clicked, uh, you know, claim this profile, and it asked me for my passport and, you know, various other uh, bits and bobs. So I've uploaded all of that, and then couple of days later in comes this email boom your profile's now been verified you you can now edit it and, and all that stuff so i'm like fuck um so i went on there put my picture on put built out a bio and everything was fine and uh I, you know the knowledge panel had triggered and i'm a happy man uh, him it's easy you know knowledge panel get a few entities boom 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 and uh, a couple of months later um i got a, a facebook message and this woman says to me, hey man, uh, are you an actor? <laughs> and I'm like, fuck. Um, I'm like, what did I say? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm an actor. Uh, and she's like, well, I'll tell you what it is. I have a husband uh, or, or a partner who's got the same name as you. And uh, your face is all over his IMDB profile. So in my head, I'm like, I've worked hard for that bastard knowledge panel. You know, it's. Anyway, I'm like, listen, I don't know what's going on, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, I blocked that fucking bitch, um, as I call it. <laughs> I'm inside, I'm shitting myself. Anyway, so I'm like, fuck, what did I do? So I build out some of these other kind of fake films and stuff that I've been in TV programs, just to kind of build out the profile and make it look like it really is me. And uh, another couple of months passes, and this other guy phones me this time he's like hi Craig uh, are you an actor <laughs> I'm like oh not this fucking bullshit again and th that is where the the whole acting thing came in so he's like dude I've seen you on YouTube I've seen you on TikTok I quite like your style your personality 
I'm looking for someone uh, to to kind of play this bad guy in the in this crime series. And uh, he came down to my office. We spoke about it, and uh, and the rest is history. Uh, now, obviously, I done this to consolidate my knowledge panel. So I've I've now been in three or four things, films, whatever you want to call it. And if anyone's done any kind of acting, you'll know that that's that's not one or two days worth of filming. That that's potentially weeks worth of work. To get that one like um, from IMDb, um, and and I've had other opportunities and been in other things uh, since that initial program because I found it quite enjoyable. To be honest, it was a uh, it was fun. It was a new experience. <laughs> it was taking me out my comfort zone. Um, acting is very different to to SEO, as you can imagine, um, which is normally boring, monotonous, you know, bullshit. Um, so I, I quite enjoy doing stuff that's bizarre because, you know, I've got friends and stuff that are like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, <laughs> what are you doing? But a lot of people other than SEOs wouldn't understand why I'd done it. But I needed that knowledge panel. Uh, I didn't want it. I needed it. And uh, that was the, that was my route. Bit of a bizarre route. Uh, it took a lot of time. But it was my way to, to get that IMDb and I wasn't going to stop until um it popped. So Yeah, I think that persistence is uh is admirable. <laughs> yeah, I mean and that's that's something I'm born with. Like if I can't get you one way I will come again from different angles until I get what I want and uh, that that's a trait that I've just always had with me. I, I just can't accept defeat. Yeah, that's a good trait for a business owner, for sure. Just out of curiosity, Craig, uh, what's the name of the most recent film? <laughs> Psycho Sex Dolls. By the way, I do not have any say in what these things are called or what they're about. I, I just get roped in. So, Psycho Sex Dolls. But I just want to clarify one thing, because obviously last week, certain people got clips of a, a trailer from it and uh, it was thrown around the SEO community as as I would fully expect if it wasn't I would be massively disappointed however I am not one of those psycho sex dolls that's all I'm going to say <laughs> I had to be careful I had to be careful because the wife will only let me push things so far <laughs> and uh, I couldn't have a main part in psycho sex dolls my it, I would have been thrown out the house because it is right. insane. Really good. A lot of fun. I think it'll be very interesting when, when it's released. But um, I, I don't watch a big part of the filming. But I'm only in it uh, for a small part, thankfully, because I, my wife would absolutely kill me. And uh, is it so it's not out yet, right? No, nah, it's coming out in, in, I believe, at the end of May. Oh, okay, I I gotta get my hands on that. <laughs> it'll be there. It'll be published all over, and uh, you will. I'm not going. I don't know if I'm allowed to say too much about it, but yeah, I, I've got mm-hmm. a fun part in it, and it's it is a small part, but um, it was a lot of fun, and again, very interesting and eye opening to to be involved. So, um, David, if you're ever watching this, I appreciate it. invite me along. <laughs> oh, that's so great <laughs> yeah it's uh it's it's amazing and um so that kind of stuff is adding additional movies is that like push more via branded new stuff no i i don't know why so or you just craig are you just an actor at this point <laughs> there, there's no there's no benefit to being in one of these like i've got in i've got the imdb profile I just enjoy it. It's like a hobby now. So, um, you know, I've done other things since, and and I like the guys that that we film with, and uh, we we have a lot of fun. So why the fuck not? You know, what? for me, dude, you know, when you're, um, you, you know, you see things getting filmed, and you go, "Fuck, that looks easy. I could walk up there and do this, that, and you know, every single thing that gets filmed gets filmed like." four or five times 
because they film it from that angle, that angle, from behind you, from in front of you. Um, so they've got to catch it in all kind of... There's just a lot more to it than, than meets the eye, and I find things like that intriguing. You know, I might not be the the best actor in the world, but I like, I'm not nervous in front of a camera or anything, and I'm, I'm quite willing to give things a go within reason, of course. Um, so... Um, I, I think uh, the guy that, that does it all um, said that to me. He's like, I, I just like working. It's easy to work with you. You turn up, you have fun, and uh, you, you're willing to to do things. And sometimes that is better to work with than some crazy diva who thinks they are, you know, an A-list actor and they're wanting this and that. And, you know, I'm just there. That is one of the lads. And... Uh, I do thoroughly enjoy the the times that I've had so far, um, and and it's just learning new things. So there is no real benefit to it. That you know, one thing I'll also state, Patrick, is there's not a lot of money in in acting. A lot of people go, "Oh, did you get paid a lot of money?" Or there's no money in acting. You know, these small uh, <coughs> things that are filmed. Um, you know, you're working on little to no budget. You know, the, the, for the guys that are filming it, it's, it, it is really a, a kind of poor industry. That's why, you know, a lot of actors, even guys that have been in Hollywood movies, um, you know, potentially, unless you're Brad Pitt, of course, um, you know, you potentially still have to do a day job because, well, you know, you're not getting millions of pounds or thousands of pounds or whatever. Certainly not at the the level that, that, you know, I've been acting at, but, you know, I think that's the case for for a lot of people. You know, a, a lot of actors, there's, there's little to no money there, um, it's, which is unfortunate. Yeah, it's just an IMDB link. You got to get it. Though. That's all I see it as, but, yeah, <laughs> and a D out, a D out for the lads, but uh, nah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and I'll, I'll keep peddling away and opportunities come my way, and, and, and I like the concept and the idea then it's not going to get me killed by the the wife then yeah by the hell not and it'll probably yeah, it'll, it'll build your rep in the seo community if it can be built anymore <laughs> <laughs> well listen sometimes the seo industry can be very boring um i think you know adding fun crazy stories into the mix um that, that are true um yeah. so a lot of people say did you know i, I remember it's shang mai Someone said to me, like, people were Googling at the time to see if I, if I was bullshitting or not, whether that was a real story. And they're like, fuck, you know, that was real. Um, so I think, you know, having good good uh, experiences create good stories. And uh, I've had a lot of fun being able just to tell the story as well. So it's, you know, the link, of course, is one thing and getting the knowledge panel is one thing. I've had a lot of fun on stage, um, you know, telling those stories. It just gives me more material and, uh, you know, it shows the kind of creativity or the way that my odd brain works. Right, right. And I think creativity like that is important in SEO and all marketing. Um, and yeah, I could see that transition from like being, you've done stage presentations so many times that it would make sense you'd be confident when it comes to uh, doing a movie regardless of how crazy it sounds yeah it's it's a lot easier to put, like you you see it in shang mai and you're walking out in front of i don't know how many people were there i don't know 800 or or whatever it was um you know that's a lot of people and and you know all eyeballs on you and the stage is all fucking lit up you're acting in front of four or five people and, and a camera is, is a piece of piss really it's no problem at all so um, I think that's probably worked well in my favour that I've had the experience of of speaking at conferences and stuff like that prior to because it was overwhelming actually if I, if I go back a step you know someone like you Patrick who is at the start of their journey and I, I know you've spoken at that event in China and whatnot but when you're sitting at home on YouTube or on a webinar or whatever it may be very different to, to being out in front of you know, thousands of people, um, and you know it's overwhelming at times. So I've, obviously, I've came through the the little guy sitting in his bedroom, um, you know, talking talking shit on YouTube to doing the stage thing, and now doing a bit of acting. So it's kind of 
the acting's probably the easiest of them all. Yes, yeah. at the start, everyone, no one's comfortable sitting here on YouTube in front of a camera. You know, anyone that says they they are hundred percent they love it is probably telling lies. Uh, you know, there's always some kind of anxiety about it, and right, there's a little underlying anxiety for sure. Yeah, of course, people are going to say, "Look at that, right?" Or look at the books in the background. Or look at that fucking wallpaper. Or right, like why didn't you choose that color of green? Yeah, him. Um, Someone's always got something to say, and that obviously puts the anxiety into a lot of people. Um, but nice to see you're embracing it, dude, and hopefully you don't get too much flack. Um, but <laughs> I appreciate yeah. it, yeah. I don't think I could get as much flack as you. <laughs> I think you get a lot of uh, a lot of kickbacks of bass. Yeah, it's, listen, it's uh, a part of the journey, I think. Um, you can't be liked by everyone. You know, there will be someone at some point that takes a dislike to you and uh, how you how you deal with it is probably uh, uh, it, it, it's probably going to show what type of man you are. Obviously, I've kicked off. I've been shouting and bawling and screaming at people on social media. It's, it's not the way to deal with it. It's uh, But it's quite oh, hard. Sometimes to it's fun. So oh, listen, we, we, we're entitled to a rant now and again but it's a uh, it's it's just part no matter who you are in the world whether you're donald trump uh whether you're whoever brad pitt you're you're getting some kind of abuse somewhere for something so uh, yeah always yeah and i'm um i'm hoping to uh i'm hoping to speak at chiang mai one year <laughs> that's my that's my new that's my new goal my new dream i think the uh, you know, Chiang Mai is probably uh, one of the big uh, SEO events out there. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, you just got to bide your time and uh, there's no reason why you can't. You know, if you if you obviously schmooze uh, the, <laughs> the people in charge. Um, also, you've got to, to also remember you have to be able to sell tickets to be on that stage because there's limited space. You've got to earn the right to, to be there um, in terms of, of a following and stuff, which I'm sure you'll get to. And so don't don't give up too early. Um, just keep keep pushing. Yeah. And now that will be the 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 high uh, level dream, and then I'll um yeah work on the YouTube bit. Uh, at smaller conferences where I can get the opportunity. But uh, you've, got to, you've just got to take the chances, the opportunities as they come, man. And uh, you you obviously took that one in <laughs> I wanted China. Um which was like bizarre. But sometimes that's what you need to just that bizarre, you know, break where you randomly talk to a bloke and he's like, Yeah, do you, do you want to come to China? And you know, you're um, having to go and buy a suit and uh, <laughs> Uh, I know. Got fitted for a suit from some uh, Thai people. It was great. It was, uh, but these are the things, you know, again, you went away and done it. You just thought, fuck it. I'm going to do it. And uh, yeah. And that, thanks, that, thanks for the motivation for that, too. Because uh, I, was, I was also, I was very anxious because I was like, should I do it? Should I not? And um, it wasn't a, a crazy experience, but I, I appreciate you just being like, yeah, sure. Why like, go for it, man. What? Dude, it's how any of us get anywhere like they like me being in that film kind of a kind of circumstance that just popped up and and you know i'm like fuck it i'm 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 in like i'm gonna do it and you just never know what these things lead to so um i quite like people that take you know those kind of chances and it could it, it could backfire on you as well <laughs> uh, but the fact that you're willing to to kind of push the boundaries shows you know a certain type of character, and and that's that's what I like about you is Thank uh, you. everything, everything that you've done. You know, you're just pushing. You, you, again, a young kid coming out to to Chiang Mai, across the other side of the world. That, that in itself was a big thing. Uh, you know, the, the the expense of the travel, accommodation. Uh, but again, you've done that, and then up comes the opportunity. So that that's what happens. In this game, you you take a punt going to Chiang Mai, and then another door opens, and before you know it, you're on a, a stage speaking with your dodgy suit on, and um, 
and that you got, that you got my suit was great, Greg. <laughs> no, Greg, right when I sent the message to the guys, and he was like, uh, "Congratulations," but I don't love the suit. <laughs> but yeah, I think actually, I think what you're saying is applicable to a lot of people too in the SEO industry. In terms of just entrepreneurs, like uh, finding your next step when it's not clear and taking chances. Like I remember when that first call I was with you, I was like overthinking stuff crazy. And I was like talking about positioning. Should I be a link builder? Should I be an e-com SEO guy? And um, we had the, this consult call and I've watched it like five times. And like my thought process changes as I watch it. And I'm kind of just like, there's no correct answer. So like if you are a entrepreneur thinking about, oh, do I have to position? No, you don't have to position. Right. People like, well, I'm not going to say names, but people will tell you, you have to position, you have to do this or that. Um, like you just have to find your, your next step and just kind of take chances and see what works. I think that's at least what I've learned. Yeah. It's, it's a, you know, for, for someone to come to you and say, you know, how should I go about positioning myself, e-com, this, that, and the next thing, whatever it was. How can I fucking really answer that? Like, how, you know, there's a lot of guys out there who make a lot of money through e -com. There's a lot of guys who make money through link building. But what's the right one for Patrick? Uh, only you know what feels right and, and, and what doesn't. And I think, you know, dipping your toe into to one area and seeing where you go, um, you know, you, you might end up down the rabbit hole and you might be a link builder eventually. Who knows? Um or you might become an e-com guy. Um, it's again, you just got to to try something. You know, I've had, I've been the freelancer. I've had an agency. I had an agency for for nine or ten years, and it was after that time I went. This is not for me. That, that, that like dealing with clients and managing large teams of staff is not suitable for for someone like me who is a bad tempered so and so. Um, you know, um, you know, I, there was a lot of reasons where the, the agency wasn't suited for me personally. Um, and again, you know, there's many people out there who have successful agency because I couldn't do it or, or I did do it because I didn't do it hugely successful. Doesn't mean you can't. So again, it's down to you. You will find what's comfortable and you'll get dragged down a path. Mm -hmm. Uh, whether you like it or not, <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah. for me, I didn't ask to go down this path that I, I, I went down. You know, I tried it out and, and I got further and further into it. You know, even doing the, the, the public speaking thing, I done one or two and I'm like, don't know if I like this. Should I, should I stop? Should I try something else? Uh, and then done a few more and I'm like, nah, fuck it. I like this. This is working. Um, let's, let's say, uh, let's continue and you know you, you and then before you know you're down the rabbit hole where you're all over the place and um, doing it and and as long as you can somehow make that work for you revenue wise um after that is is obviously um what the end goal is for all of us and um you know it's it's selling it's marketing it's it's whatever you want to call it uh, it's just a different style of it. So you need to find what suits, suits your personality and all that as well. Because again, when I met you <coughs> on that call, hadn't met you in person, I don't think, at that point. And, uh, you know, I don't know what your personality type's like, you know, without meeting someone and maybe spending right. some time with them. And you, 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 it's all guesswork. So um, that, that's why you obviously... What was really useful too is um, mindset. Um, I think I had the wrong mindset. And so you kind of corrected that. Um, so my mindset was like master SEO is what I said to you. And uh, you're like, no, don't don't worry so much about mastering SEO. Uh, just worry about being a business owner and increasing revenue for your company, for your client's company. Like it's more important to be a business owner than just some, you know, SEO rock star that's in is uh basement <laughs> working away on a laptop yeah i think that that is something that most most people fail on that that i speak to 
is the sort of business elements of it. You know, I speak to a lot of guys who are super introverted, really technical, really geeky. Um, you know, the the the, the basement type people, as as you've said, um, but they can't market themselves and they don't do business that well. They they, they don't think too much about the the business side of things and. I, again, another failure I had is I built myself into my business uh, initially when I had the agency rather than working on my business. I didn't have processes, didn't have the right team round about me and essentially I was in the middle of it all fighting for for a gasp of air, uh, you know, working myself into the ground essentially and that is no way to live. Now, whether that means that I'm no longer the guy in the basement that does all the work 24 7 that's fine who cares who's fucking in a dungeon like who cares um i'm one right. easy as life i can get and make the most money i don't give a fuck who's technically better than me or who's better at talking than me or or anything like that none of these things are actually important they're, they're just ego driven uh things and uh and when you realize that and and you you just make money and you you know you're if you're constantly making money then life just becomes a bit easier and you can hire and delegate and get systems yeah. in place and, and and travel and have fun with, with, with people in uh thailand and, and whatnot so you know these are great experiences that we'll probably talk about for years you know the the nights out and uh all the kind of uh fun fun things that that, that we had in, in thailand and yeah. Just fun chats, uh, you know, sitting by right. the pool and all that stuff. So, you know, these these all make great memories. So, and, and that wouldn't happen without making money. So, right, I think exactly. Most people, most people, there are business first, um, and and that's the way I see it anyway. Yeah, no, I think that's a good way to look at it, especially for SEO people, um, since. And I'm one of them, like I'll, I'm still getting myself out of the client work. Like I'm still doing a lot of it and um, I have fun with it and you should enjoy it. You know, like getting into deep audits, all that stuff is good. Um, but at the same time, you had to take a step back. Like um, I forget who it was, but I know that uh, Clint Butler was like saying it, but I think someone else told him. But just like spending the first 90 minutes in the morning, like just reflecting on your own business and like how you're pushing it forward and not just waking up and diving into client work and all of that. Nah, that's crazy to, to do that. Um, oh, nah, good advice, whoever, whether it be Clint, whether he took it from someone, whoever it may be, a mm -hmm. good tip. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's it's a lot of good stuff, and, and that's what we're doing now is, like, um, we're increasing revenue, so we're hiring um, brand managers, um, to take on a lot of the higher level work or at least help me with it. So, um, and I'm also partnering with someone. So, um, that guy I mentioned to you on messenger. So, um, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Might be, uh, probably some obstacles in the way that we'll overcome, but. I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, you know, partnering with people is not necessarily a bad thing, uh, to do uh, providing you complement each other in terms of skills and you know it's still not someone latching on to you uh you know and hanging on to your coattails and dragging you down essentially um well, as long as the the person uh fits in into and adding value there's no reason why it can't work and you know as long as you've got the right partnership agreement in place and how you exit that business, if things don't go well, you know, if you, as long as you've got that in place, um, you know, there's no reason why partnerships can't work. That's how businesses grow and scale. So, again, you know, partnering up uh, with people who have skills that you maybe don't, whether that maybe just be, a, a, you know, more experience or whatever it may be, why not? You know, I've partnered up with sales guys before and, and various other bits and bobs because it allowed me to, to focus on uh, the kind of personal branding and, and, and the SEO side of things and that person would deal with any of the kind of leads and, and mm -hmm. you know, day to day client management and things like that and, and it worked very very well so um, again 
I wouldn't have been able to 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 grow to the level um, that that we did without that person. And yeah. I think partners partners are always always good, always good yeah. um, if you can do it. I think flying is a lone wolf. Um, you know, if you don't delegate and and you know you don't work yourself out as a business partnership, is another another option. So, yeah, um, um, thank you. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll see. He's very good at uh, he scaled an agency in terms of employees. So, um, that's kind of our contrasting skill set. Is uh, he's more of the organization like overarching uh, management type. So yeah, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll keep you posted. We'll see how it goes. Either way, I'll yeah. I'll build up from the ground up if it doesn't work. <laughs> Always the case. Um, so uh, to get on some more, uh, uh, what do you think about the Google March update since that just happened? Do you have any thoughts yet? It's it's obviously difficult to give too much of an answer. Everyone has seen what people are putting out there. You know, was it targeted towards certain people who were blatantly talking? about websites um you know i've not seen a lot of people out with the people like julian goldie and and stuff like that that have been hammered too much i think you know it probably was what people are suggesting a bit of a targeted update to to people who had publicly um shared projects that they were working on and i think it it was pretty rough i i, I know friends who have had multiple websites uh, had a manual action taken against them, and and you know pe- people are we we're still not entirely sure how we're going to get out. You know what of some of the friends that have uh, request uh, requested a reconsideration, Google's not yet actioned that, and um, so I think it's too too early to say too much about how to recover from it, but. It was it was pretty full on for for those who were hit. A lot of other people um, are are reporting that they've seen things go up, and you know I've had I've I've got other friends who also have used AI content and and have you know big AI websites that have improved. Um, you know that that's the bizarre fucking thing. You know, was this algorithmic or was this? targeted action and I'm not seeing the same thing across the board uh, which is why I think it's probably targeted just from you know obviously uh, the SEO community is relatively small a lot of people talk to each other and give each other feedback and information and whatnot and you know out with the the, you know the people that have had a a severe spanking I'm not seeing too many people um, with the AI content seen too much you know i see some guys not going to name names because i don't want anyone in trouble but i certainly see some guys posting that their their ai content's flying through the roof <laughs> so oh, you're like fuck um, so was it targeted against the ai content was it more targeted towards certain people uh, i would say it's definitely the latter um but i think uh you know we still have to wait a few more weeks because is you need to let uh, updates take a bit of time to settle down and see, you know, if anything is rolled back, anything's, you know, added to or, or, or whatever it may be. So I think we just need to give it a bit more time. But for, for the people that were hit, it, it, you know, it's it's had a devastating effect on yeah. one of you of those guys. So, um, and I hope that they, they are able to recover. Yeah, I do too. Um yeah, it's kind of horrible. Um, I don't love how Google is just seems to be targeting people. Um, we will see over the next few weeks, like how what does it actually mean? Um, it does seem to be kind of hitting both AI and non AI, so it's hard to say whether it's really about AI content or whether it's about something else. Yeah, but I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure we'll soon find out. Uh, <laughs> but. You know, I, I think with anyone, everyone's always quick to jump to conclusions when an update comes out. And, of course, no one really knows the right answer, so you've just got to give it, you know, a good month to see how things settle down. And then we can start to 
to try and analyze what's went on. Yeah. And do you think, um, from your intuition, what do you think, like, in terms of the future of SEO and everything in that sort of vein of thought, um, what are you thinking there? It's, you know, I, I don't think anyone can argue that SEO or organic positioning is being pushed further and further down. Now, certainly in the UK, we, we have yet to see SGE rolled out. I know you guys have it and, and obviously it takes up a bit more space and you're pushing organic down. I, I don't think that's, it's always been the case, you know, even, you know, from 10 years ago or, or 12 years ago when Google Maps came out, you know, that was to push organic down. Did it have the desired impact uh, or did it impact SEO a great deal? No, it didn't. And and again, when Google stopped having the sidebar ads and they, they had the four Google ads at the top, then the maps, then the organic search. Did that really kill off organic search? No, it didn't. Because people don't necessarily click in paid ads. And they don't necessarily, I mean, I know maps do get traffic, but people still were going down to organic. Now, obviously we know we're getting pushed further and further down. And of course, you know, you'd need to be a complete and utter buffoon to, to suggest otherwise. Um, my big thing over the last few years uh, is trying to diversify the traffic sources. You know, I have leaned a lot more on YouTube uh, in the last four years. I have got TikTok. I've got other social media platforms. Um, you know, and I think doing marketing uh, or getting traffic in general is really, really important. And, and you know, I win a lot of... Uh, consultancy business and various other bits and bobs through probably YouTube more than I do my website. Um, so I think, you know, diversifying your traffic sources and trying to build a brand uh, are all things that I've been trying to do for a number of years anyway. And not because I think SEO is dead or dying in any way, but we are getting pushed further and further away. Um <sighs> I can go to YouTube and I can I, I, I can promote a product or a, a SaaS tool or whatever it might be and, and and I can make money and I think that's you know, marketing is not gonna be full stop. So I, you know, my advice to anyone would be try and build out the other areas of, of marketing. Don't just solely rely on SEO because there may come a time where, you know, Google just fucks fucks everyone's business up and uh, I know that you've got other other search engines and whatnot, but, you know, Bing, for, for a start, doesn't have the same traffic levels as, as Google does. Um, and, and I just think you've got to, to think outside the box and, and try and be creative. More people are consuming video content than reading blogs. And I think whether you're an affiliate, whether you're promoting whatever, uh, e-com products, I think all of these guys are tapping into all of that. And if you're just going to sit in the SEO lane, you're going to miss out on all that other business that's out there. So you need to try and diversify that. Uh, and of course, I do diversify all of that, but do I still get a lot of organic traffic? The answer is yes. And, you know, organic traffic on one of my e-com stores is still the best source of traffic for me. Um, I, I do a lot of paid, yeah, both, paid Google ads, paid social media, uh, and I spend a lot of money on it. Um, SEO still brings in the most traffic. So for now, I think it's still alive and kicking. Um, but I, I think a wise man would tell you to broaden your, your traffic sources. Yeah. And we're still seeing that as well on most of our clients. Organic is the highest. Um, of course, it depends on brand, what you are, you know, there's going to be certain companies that are better at social media and other stuff. But yeah, if you're focusedly, if you're purely a, uh, you know, a website only, and you don't have any brand outside of that, you don't have a YouTube, you don't have Pinterest, whatever it is. I agree with you. There's tons of ways to, you know, drive traffic. And if you're not doing that, you're probably not set up for, uh, you're not future proofing your website. Future proofing is the right word. We, me and Randy had a webinar today and it was about future proofing 
your digital marketing career. Um, and I know people are not comfortable being in camera and whatnot. But if you want to future proof your business, your career, then you better start getting comfortable in front of a camera or hire someone who is. Um, either or uh, works, but I think uh, video content is is something that more and more people are consuming, and that's that's just the way life's going. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Video is definitely uh, definitely powerful. Um, here's a kind of random question, but like for you two. Uh, Julian Goldie says that he sees a lot of, like something like 90% of his traffic from Google search on YouTube. Do you get a lot of Google search traffic on your YouTube? Like, what does it break down? Yeah, you do. Um, you know, it it, it depends on what type of content you're putting out. Um, you know, a lot a lot of traffic or a lot of videos will pop in, in the Google search results. And, you know, if you're doing your embeds and everything else, you will pop in the video carousel on Google. And I think, you know, for, for someone like Julian, um, you know, he's done a lot around AI over the last year. And, of course, it's a trending topic and new and shiny and all that kind of stuff. So his, audio, his videos are going to pop both on YouTube and in organic search. And, um, you know... If you're doing the the YouTube strategy properly and, and you're making them pop in the video carousel, uh, you know that's an important part of your YouTube strategy. And and you know for me, if I want my videos to pop, I know what I've got to do. It's not just launch the video and and that's it. You know there, there's more to it. You've got to do your embeds and everything else to to help it pop in the the Google search result. Can you go a little bit more into that strategy? Because right now I'm doing nothing like that. So. Um, I know that uh, by embeds, do you mean like a press release or is there something more you can do? Well, you could do a press release or you could use Money Robot, that type of thing. Um, the, the embeds help, you know, it, it basically creates mass, uh, you know, masses of this video on a whole bunch of websites. And then in turn, Google go, ah, this video must be good. Boom, it goes into the cert, um as as well so obviously for many years i have followed uh, holly starks on a lot of youtube stuff and uh, done a few of her courses and obviously i'm i'm friends with her now and uh but yeah big uh, youtube uh sorry embeds for your youtube video is is the big thing for getting your videos to pop and the uh, the search result and if i want to be found for whatever that video is titled in google then of course i'm going to have to do my embeds so it's a uh, simple and easy is that mate <laughs> simple and easy. But you could do it through press releases you know what you want is 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 for that video to be embedded in a number of websites and and i'm not saying you have to be high profile like you know thousand pound forbes guest posts or whatever you know, just just get them embedded any old place, and it seems to still work a charm. So, um, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I got to do that. That's one area I've been uh, lacking in. So, so I'll push that. Got to what? Got to what? The YouTube. Um, you know, if you're getting in the Google search results, you're going to get a lot more subscribers and a lot more growth and uh, stuff like that. So, it's definitely worth doing, mate. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah no that's definitely uh definitely something that's on my radar so so i'll I'll work on that um and you said money robot plus uh maybe i know holly starks talks about it a lot so she may have more content on that so so i'll do some digging yeah i think yeah do some digging i don't want to say too much on here and people start right. fucking pulling my youtube videos down but uh... <laughs> I'll, I'll dig around like, hey yeah, that's a SEO skill as well. Learning to dig around and ask around, um, and networking too. Yeah. Like, um, I feel like the you've talked a lot about the power of of uh, drinking at the bar, <laughs> just just chatting yeah. and and picking your peers' brains and all that. Well, you've been been to a few now, and uh, I think the first one I met you at was the spring spring training last year. Yep. Uh, um, 
and again great bunch of guys and and obviously that you came to to me and chris's event in in vegas um and then of course out in Chiang Mai. so you've seen it for yourself you know you're able to do what you like to have a beer with someone go out for dinner with someone um and and hopefully utilize that time very wisely not get too pissed uh mm -hmm. And and that's the important thing uh, is you need to try and use that time wisely because most of these people would charge you an arm and a leg if it was a consult call. And um, so when you're there, you need to to mingle and not just get too drunk. That's the big important part. Is not because I've been there, dude, and you know, been at bars and like your bastard, I was standing with this and I never asked them that, and I should have asked this, and and then you can't fucking talk to them again you know, you know some people don't even reply to their uh emails or, oh, or messages you're like fuck you know i had that person right there and i i spoke a lot of shit about a lot of shit while i was pissed and made an ass of it so uh got to you've got to strike while they're there be strategic with yeah and writing down questions before you go to the conference was good for me um because it is hard like when you're on the spot you're like oh, you know, I have Craig Campbell here, but like, what do I say? You know, like, what do I ask? And you kind of have to, if you don't write it down and you don't like, go through your, uh, in your brain, it's, uh, yeah, it can be tough to find um, the right questions. I've got a friend who, he always carries an iPad around with him and uh, he's got the iPad and a little fucking pen and he takes notes and all that shit. And I remember... <laughs> He came up to me at an event once and he's like, Craig, I've got three things I want from this conference. I need to speak to this guy. I need to speak to that person. And I want to know how to do this. He says, who the fuck, uh, who knows how to do this? And, and, you know, I put him in touch with someone and, and how can I speak to that person? I'm like, right, cool. I'll get them down for a beer. And, uh, you know, so-and-so knows him and we'll try and arrange that. And, you know, that person just had three things that they wanted from that event. Just three fairly simple things and they left the event happy. So you've got to go with an agenda. You know, like yeah, that you, makes sense. you might be shit at YouTube, for example, or new to YouTube might be fairer to say. And you go to an event, you're like, fuck it, I'm going to nail Holly Starts because she knows a lot about YouTube. I'm going to corner her. I'm going to tell her she's coming out for dinner with me. And I'm going to fucking pick the brains off of her. And, um, you know, that may be your only goal at the next event. Um, you know, and, and you leave there going, I've got a plan of action now that I'm, you know, rather than talking shit to everyone at a bar, just have a person that you're going to go right after and, uh, and nail them. If you can, of course. Yeah. That makes Straight sense. Straight out. That's off. <laughs> right you gotta you gotta do a little smoozing <laughs> be a little bit nice yeah. <laughs> but you should be good exactly um so um you're i think i don't know if i'd say known but i would say it so i'm gonna say it uh you're kind of known for mentoring people because you mentor gary wilson uh mark and a lot of uh people and they've been pretty successful in their companies um, what do you think, like, when you look back at Gary or Mark or any of these guys, what do you think, like, the one thing they were missing or kind of the biggest piece of advice you gave them and so on that, that kind of helped them figure out their business? I, you know, I think there's not one piece of advice where I could say I've given, you know, the, the big thing is introductions, building up their... Uh, mindset and um, that you know a lot of guys like gary for example i, I met gary when he was 18 and mm -hmm. uh he he didn't think the way he does now you know you you see he's a very confident character you know he's got a few quid he's got a different mindset he's very driven very hungry um and you know there wasn't one thing where you could say do this and, and all of that changes you know there was a lot of things um you know, introductions to, to the right people. Um, and, and of course, Gary used to come to a lot of different conferences with me. He used to travel the world coming to conferences. So he was able to network with the people that, that I was able to 
to get him to. Um, he took the time out and spent the money traveling the world doing that. And of course, uh, had to make money off the back of it, which was obviously selling links. So he done it. You know, like Gary, you have to fucking come to conferences if you want to make money. You have to come and talk to these big dogs. You have to come here and you have to be able to make it pay for itself. Um, you have to do this and you have to do that. And again, the biggest thing that any of these guys can do is take action. And, you know, if I can make someone take action, uh, or force them to do not force because I don't do that, but encourage people to take action, to spend a bit of money in themselves, to invest in their uh, apprenticeship, if you like, you know, coming and meeting these guys will, will set you apart. It's all about who you surround yourself with. And, you know, if you're able to, like, come with me and you can get to speak to, you know, certain people within the industry, then that that you're bypassing a lot of years that it would take you to go and do that yourself. And, and you know, it, a lot of that effort comes from within them. Um, you know, they've got to be hungry. They've got to find the funds to go and do it. They've got to pull the trigger. And, and all that kind of stuff. You can lay it all on a plate for someone and, and tell them what to do. And if you're a pussy uh, and you don't do it, then you're not going to get to that next level. End of story. Um, so there's nothing really special there. I think anyone that, that I've been able to help in any way has had to have a bit between their teeth. And that's why I, I compliment you and say, you know, you were a, a little guy you know, who come on a, a console call and, you know, finding his feet in the SEO industry. And I know you're still a young guy, but again, you, you spent money, you travelled the world, you you had to do some client work to be able to pay for that. And, um, you know, and, but you didn't go and piss it up against the wall partying and, you know, wearing all the kind of fancy clothes. You, you, you're you investing in yourself all the time. And guys like that, for me, are, are the ones that are going to win. Oh. And... Uh, you know, there's certain traits within certain people where you can see it, you can just see it, and you're just like, dude, you have to do this. You have to do that. And you obviously you give them a bit of guidance and, you know, sometimes you have to even beat them down a little bit. You know, they, they, they get too big for their boots and you have to, you know, wrestle them down a peg or two and, and, and things like that. So, um, obviously, it, it's it's years, um, you know, that, that, that go into to those type of, relationships but um you know certainly a lot of the ones that that i have been able to to help in some way um have been very very successful with it and and again sometimes people are just anxious cautious you know they're not as big or happy as me um you know sometimes i'm i'm insane like i'll just take action on some stupid things um as well but i make more uh, positive decisions than the negative um, and I think just too many people are, are too stale or standoffish and they don't want to to take action just you know this this game is not that difficult you've just got to fucking take action just do it and um, you know if someone else is out there making money why can't you um, you know what the difference between you and someone else um, it's, it's just someone else turning up and, and applying themselves and if you're too much of a, you know, pussy to, to you know, join it, then you're not going to get a share of the pie if you're going to just stand about and talk about it and go out and piss around with your mates and drink all your money and piss it against the wall or whatever. And you've got to have a plan of action. You'll get a staff to build towards something. And a lot of people don't have that kind of fighting mentality. They, 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 they're they beaten before they even think about it. They're like, nah, I could never do this. I could never do that. Like, for me... When I decided that I wanted to give this whole SEO speaking thing a, a, a shot, I never thought for a second that I, I would speak at Chiang Mai or um, any of the other events that I've spoken at. And, uh, you know, I could have easily said to myself, there's no way that you're getting on that stage. There's just no way. Um, but you've got to fight and hustle and blag and trick and con and whatever it fucking takes, you know, schmooze, whatever it takes to get that opportunity. And, um, you know, I've had help along the way. Um, you know, my first speaking gig at Chiang Mai, um, someone pulled out. I spoke in Chiang Mai in 2018, as well as as um, 
in 2023 and uh, some guy pulled out and and say uh, a friend of mine uh, who was friendly with Diggy he's like you need to have Craig on there put Craig on and I was obviously in a fortunate position that that that, that happened and then you do that and you do well other opportunities come up so you've just got to to be there to to take those opportunities and um that's just the way life goes in it yeah that's amazing amazing advice and yeah i think that's probably the um thing like i was in seo for five six years before going to a single conference that's probably my biggest regret like in terms of business is once you start going to these conferences and you speak to people, you realize how much knowledge is in other people, how much resources, like how just important it is to go out and talk to these people. Well, you, you've mentioned Clint, for example. You know, if you go to spring training uh, and, and you know, you meet Clint and, you know, uh, an elderly, I'm not elderly gentleman, an older gentleman with a lot of experience, you know, he's a, you know, an experienced guy, uh, not just in, not just in, you know, SEO, the SEO space, you know, he's ex-military, you know, he's, 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 you know, he's, he's a high standing citizen um, out there. Uh, and, and, you know, if you can meet guys like that along the way that can, you know, give you some push or some pull in the right direction, then you, you know, that is where you really are surrounding yourself with talk to your people um you know again you've got a wide variety of people that you met at spring training that that were also you know terry samuels all of these guys um you know have outrageous amounts of experience and all different things you know and there's just that many money just can't really buy um that that level of experience and i think sometimes people see events is a kind of jolly up but uh you know i think a lot of these guys have a lot of value to add in their own little micro niches within seo you know these guys are doing like schema stuff and you know there's someone over there that's doing some other weird like lee witcher and you know all of these kind of guys are all doing mad stuff so um i i think it's a uh, definitely something that would progress you massively it has to have uh, you know, going to that first event to to where you are now, you've probably seen in the last year a big upwards trajectory, both in your confidence uh, and 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 your abilities and everything else has to has to have. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, as crazy as it is, like since that the, in the past year, since going to that first conference, I've learned more about SEO than the five years prior than that. Because you just talk yeah. to these people and it clarifies all your thoughts and you know, you're doing SEO in your in your basement or whatever. And you you have your own theories and stuff, but to have that tested and to meet people like, you know, Ted, Lee Witcher, Terry, Clint, uh, Mad Singer, like you, all these people that test your knowledge on stuff. Um, I mean, yeah. it's so good for your SEO knowledge, but it's also so good for just business and and realizing like how this stuff works you know a lot of it is who you know so it's been massive for me um been absolutely massive that's yeah. uh, something you've got to keep beating the drum about me <laughs> keep telling people to get out more and uh and take action but the big thing is there's, there's obviously a cost to it and um, you know the cost of going to the event a flight you know a ticket for the event a place to stay it, yeah it's not cheap so pick wisely where you're going um it's, it's all i'd say there's a lot of events but they're not all great right right and um what are some events you would recommend for someone that's getting started um it depends what you want to get out of it right that that's the big thing there's certain events for certain people you know obviously spring training is a great event um you know it's it's more personalized you get more time with the 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 people that are there um our event digital unfiltered i'm going to be biased and throw that in Woo! it was good and, you know i've been to to rock stars uh, again i met a lot of those guys but you know shang mai 
affiliate world. There, there's that many. There's so many I could mention. It depends on what you want out of it. Who's going to be there? Uh, you know, you've got to look at that speaker lineup and see who can I value from? What am I trying to learn? You know, there's events out there that that uh, that are maybe more, uh, you know, salesy. Um, you need to be careful of that. You know, where you're being pitched and sold to a lot. I don't think that is good for us as SEOs, where you're being sold something that, you know, for one reason or another, it isn't always that good. Um, so that you know, there are events out there. You just need to to be careful. Um, and and again, I think you get a feel for for speakers and what type of content they're likely to provide. And if that ticks what you want to hear then so be it and um, you know i don't have a go to that um you know and, and it, obviously if there's three or four speakers on that stage that you really like and they're offering diverse information you know that's the the one to to go to um you know that's the the big thing so what's good for for one is not necessarily good for the other um, you know, I, I look at traffic and conversion as a conference and it's one that I want to go to. But when I see a lot of the speakers, I'm like, are, are they ticking all the boxes for me and, and what I'm looking to, to achieve? Because um, it's quite a broad thing. It's not just about SEO. So... Um, you know, you need to be careful. And, and, you know, again, when you go to the likes of affiliate world, there's people talking about TikTok, you know, guys that have got TikTok agencies. You might say, fuck it, I'm not doing TikTok. What am I going to learn from that? You know, there's a lot of paid advertising stuff at affiliate world. So, again, if you're not really big in, in paid, then you might not find a huge amount of value at that particular conference. So, not speaking bad of any conference, I just think certain conferences um target certain types of audience and and even you know i've been to events that that are specifically for the the porn and dating niche and um, there's events out there for that so you can you know you can go really deep if you're working mm-hmm. in specific niche. there's probably a conference out there specific to your niche and guys that are absolutely crushing it in that space and again not necessarily the the names that you might expect to be there, um, but they're they're, they're names within their own right, crushing it in right. those spaces. So, um, there's a yeah. lot to choose from. That that's that's what I would yeah. say. And I've learned a lot from uh, a lot of conferences, including the, the kind of porn one, because those guys are actively working in a really um, a really competitive environment and uh, some of the tricks that they get up to and stuff it's it's always interesting so <laughs> i'm sure there's some nasty strategies <laughs> oh there is so absolute yeah like finding out who the who the speakers are i think that's really a good piece of advice um you know like if you want to learn large scale youtube stuff see like follow also follow these people on social media that's when i learned about um spring training you know, like if Holly's having a conference, be on her newsletter. If you want to learn from Holly, be on her social media. She'll post about it and then go. Uh, so all the ones we've mentioned, I think, are really good if you're going to be uh, in the SEO industry. Um, I don't I haven't been to many of the uh, corporate SEO conferences, but I don't know what, what, if you would you'd probably not recommend something like an SEO. And um, not from a I, I'm not going to sit here and, and slag off the event um you know there's four and a half thousand people go to it i I think it's very well put on event um but the the a lot of the speakers are agency members of staff who are not really that experienced and not really going to give me much value and i mean there's certainly some speakers that will give value but i just think it's more of a agency led event and and agencies uh you know want to to put a speaker up and and you know get them speaking experience and 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 whatnot uh, and some of this stuff can kind of be kind of you know basic to to mid-level stuff so you know certainly for me um 
a learning experience. I've never found Brighton to be great from from that perspective. But very well put on event, great parties, networking, uh, all of that kind of stuff. And I think that's the biggest thing. I think you could see that about most SEO events. You know, some of the speakers are token speakers, if you want to call it that, and um, mm-hmm. to to fill a quota. Uh, yeah. And and you know that a handful of the speakers will be, uh, you know, there to to share some nuggets. But yeah, um... well, um, uh, Craig, I'll let you go. Um, but uh, I could I could talk for a while because it's always fun. Um, one thing that I actually think is hugely valuable um, for anyone watching this is to join your mastermind. Um, and I'm actually serious; like, I'm not just pitching people, like. Um, a lot of the real stuff that's working in SEO, a lot of the conferences, a lot of the conference goers are in Craig Campbell's mastermind group. So um, I'll have a link to that in the description. I think it's a great group, tons of value. Um, they share a lot of good stuff. Um, I'll also have a link to spring training because I think that was the first conference I went to that really uh, changed my career. Um, and Terry puts that on very good stuff. Um is there anything else you would want to share? Um, no, nah, that's it. Um, really, um, I think obviously, I think Terry's events on must be on in like two or three weeks. Uh, I think yeah, it's the start of April. So, um, depending on when this actually goes out, <laughs> I'll try to post it. I'll try to post it quick. Uh, <laughs> is that's a good point? Yeah, yeah, it's the anniversary of of when you first went nearly so um yeah i can't speak highly enough about uh terry and elizabeth and, and all the guys that that regularly go to spring training i'm not going to make it this year but uh i will be back uh, yeah yeah I'm sure of it. exactly and then um you also have uh your 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 um you just did like a renovation of your link building agency right yes links for you.com um so have a new partner in that and um, graham grieve uh yeah, I know. who's in the masterminds um he so when i was saying to you about partnering up with people um you know graham's a process freak um very process driven very hungry um very clever you know it's not fair to say he's just all about processes and sales and everything else um but Certainly, uh, adding that to the mix uh, overall it, it is going to help that grow. Um, you know, I've had the link building agency for five years, maybe, um, but it, uh, you know, Graham coming on board is is, is going to help grow, scale, uh, add his uh, input into it, and and I think. Uh, you know, the, the I, I I don't want to deal with the sales side of it. Um, you know, I can obviously promote it, but he's he's a killer at the the sales side. So I think we'll complement each other, and hopefully, it's another successful business venture. Yeah, that's exciting. And yeah, uh, Graham's a great uh, SEO in his own right. Um, he's been around the group. And so, yeah, I I really do recommend um, as a next step to join Craig's Mastermind if you have uh, the budget to, because there's a lot of these people that go to the conferences that are in there. And that's sort of a cheaper way you could get your foot in the door, ask some questions and all of that. Um, But Craig, thank you so much for talking with me. I really do appreciate it. No worries at all, Patrick. It's been a pleasure, mate, and keep up the good work. Yeah, awesome. Well, everyone check out Craig. Uh, You guys have a good day. Uh, You too, Craig. A good evening, I guess.